So I wonder what's going through their minds right now, because Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have one last big public showdown. And it happens tonight at the third and final debate here in Las Vegas. Hillary Clinton been kind of hunkering down, getting ready over the past few days, which is what she has done with the previous debates as well, prepping in a hotel in New York and then headed to Las Vegas yesterday. Donald Trump here as well. We spoke to Kellyanne Conway, his campaign manager. She said yes, they indeed have been also prepping and working on uh, debate uh, lines of questioning and, and so forth all through the night last night as well, including a campaign event that uh, Donald Trump held. He was in Colorado. And when he was in Colorado yesterday, he sort of coined a, a new phrase for his campaign and talked about the changes that he would like to see happen in Washington. Watch this. We are going to end the government of corruption, which it has definitely been. And we're going to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. From Washington, D.C. now is Martin O'Malley, former governor of Maryland and Democratic candidate for president and a Hillary Clinton supporter. Uh, governor, good to have you with us here this morning. Welcome. Thank you, Martha. Good to be with you again. You know, the idea of draining the swamp, of sort of uh, creating term limits for members of Congress, of making it so that people can't lobby within five years from leaving government positions where they, you know, work for the government, they're paid by the taxpayer, and then, you know, the, week, the next week uh, they're being paid by corporate entities to try to sway legislation. Uh, do you think that's something that resonates with the American people? Oh, I think it absolutely does. I mean, look, one of the, one of the great challenges we have right now in our country is so many people believe that their government doesn't work for them anymore. Uh, that has to do with many factors. One is the prolonged recession and therefore recovery that took longer than any of us would like. But many of these things are actually things that Hillary Clinton's already come out for in her support of the bill that Tammy Baldwin has put in. Uh, but I, and they would resonate, I think, more in terms of being persuasive for Donald Trump were it not for the fact that he's the first candidate not to be willing to reveal his his tax returns and also he had his own campaign manager have to resign because of the millions he's received from the Russians and their puppet politicians. So I think Donald Trump lacks credibility in delivering this message, but I agree um, that the, there is probably a lot of popular support for doing things that restore some greater accountability in, in well, Washington. It's just not something that you hear uh, that much from um, Hillary Clinton in terms of, you know, of term limits and things along those lines. Uh, when you look at the things that have come out in WikiLeaks and you see the relationship that she and her campaign have had with the press, they're sending her chunks of uh, stories asking for approval, uh, cheering them on in other emails. It does add to this notion that people are picking up on that... Um, that the press has been largely on her side and that she enjoys a, a very unique relationship that maybe leaves a lot of the American people feeling quite left out of the mix. Well, you think, uh, well, I would, you know, respectfully disagree with you on that. I think no candidate has received more free airtime on a 24-7 basis in the history of the republic than has Donald Trump uh, from not only cable networks, but there was that CBS executive who I think was quoted as saying, look, I know we're giving way too much coverage to Trump, but it's good for, for ratings. Uh, I haven't seen, you know, whatever I've seen of the WikiLeaks stuff, which I think we should yeah. not forget, were hacked by uh, the Russian government, according to virtually every uh, credible uh, uh, analyst uh, who, who covers this. Uh, I've seen nothing in there that terribly shocks or surprises or things that we didn't so already know. It, let me ask you about that. It doesn't shock or surprise you that um, Hillary Clinton's staff was going through the emails and discussing quite openly amongst themselves, well, maybe these should be included, those shouldn't be included, let's get rid of those, should we include things that were between her uh, and the president, um, when they've been subpoenaed by Congress to turn everything, everything over. That doesn't shock you? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read those particular ones that you're talking about, but whenever oh, there's really? a FOIA request, yeah, really, there's like, Martha, <laughs> gee, man, these, I mean, these things well, are coming out every day. Well, they've been reported on quite a bit, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I'm, go on. I try to do the best I can to keep up on all of these Russian dirty tricks. It's hard when they stage them every day. Um, but I, I know from my own experience that staff will, you know, if you get a FOIA or a subpoena for records, uh, you, do have to, you do have to look and communicate and ask which ones um, need to be turned over and, and what the criteria is and those sorts of things. I think the bigger story here that a lot of people are, are missing is that these things are being stolen 
uh, these emails by the Russian government and hackers that are sent in that have been encouraged to do so by Donald Trump. That's a pretty unprecedented yeah, event. We haven't really it would make heard Ronald anyone... Reagan roll over in his grave to have a Republican nominee who's as cozy as Donald Trump is with the Russian government and their spy I guess agencies. the problem is we haven't had uh, you know, anybody who's involved in these really come out and say, well, that is absolutely, that's not an email that I ever wrote. Um, so, so that, you know, there's sort of two sides to that story, and the one that you yeah, bring Marco, up is, is valid. Yeah. Well, Martha, about, Martha uh, look, M Marco Rubio himself said, and he's a Republican candidate for U.S. Senate and former presidential candidate, that he won't discuss the WikiLeaks uh, uh, hacking because he doesn't believe, he believes that today it might be Democrats, tomorrow it could be Republicans no doubt. Uh, being hacked no doubt. by a foreign and government. And you know what, in either case, you have to look at the content as well as the concerns about hacking. So that, that's just what we're trying to do here. Um, let me ask you one more thing. In, in terms of vision, um, many say that Hillary Clinton, although she, obviously she's doing very well in the polls right now, and, and Donald doing Trump goes into tonight the underdog. Um, in terms of the vision for the country, you know, what do you, do you think she's done a good enough job at sort of presenting what a Hillary Clinton presidency would really look like for the American people? What, what's your sense of, of, you know, sort of the number one thing that you see her carrying the torch for? Yeah, you know, you know, I don't think she's done a good enough job of laying out the bold vision, and I think she has the opportunity to do that tonight. I think she's shown mm -hmm. in the last two debates that she's plenty unflappable and she's plenty tough. What she needs to speak to tonight are the bold steps that we need to take as a nation to get wages to go up again for all American families, to talk about climate change not just as a threat but as a job creation opportunity, and to also talk about how immigration reform can help make wages go up rather than down because there's nothing that's such a drag on wages as having 11 million people work off the books in a shadow economy. So I think she has the opportunity tonight really to deflect in ways she uh, hasn't done in the last two debates and return to the issues that matter most to all of us around our kitchen right. table. I think we've heard too much about Everybody Trump and not like enough about us. That on, on all sides, I agree with you. Governor O'Malley, good to have you with us today, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very good much for coming you. on.